Sripad Urukam Prabhu is senior and very sincere Vaishnava. He was initiated by Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, your Prabhupada. And since then he is serving, preaching. So I want that he should speak at least five minutes to tell what is the aim and object of mind to come here and to go there prepare. O Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guravena Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Samani Dinam Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharani Nirvishe Shunyavadi Pashtacha Deshatar Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Radhikaya Priyatmane Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayaniti Namani Sri Krishna Lila <coughs> Katane Sudaksham Adorya Madhurya Gunaishtu Yuktam Varam Varenyam Purusham Mahantam Narayanastam Shirsha Namami Namo Mahabadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gauda Trishe Namaha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Nanamostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Vrindai Tulasi Deviai Priyaye Kesavasyacha Krishna Bhakti Pradi Devi Sachavachai Namo Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram Ram Our beloved Srila Prabhupada, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, ventured forth to the Western world to deliver the divine teachings of His beloved Gurudev Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And the entire disciplic succession, back to uh, Six Goshamis and Sriman Mahaprabhu. His mission was to give, was to distribute the same teachings that the Acharyas distributed to the world. We know that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatan Goswami personally in the highest tenets of the bhakti path and he instructed them that they should distribute this to the world in the form of writing so many shastras. And they were to convey to the world why Mahaprabhu, why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended to this world. So many wonderful shastras they composed, so many divine shlokas full of so much, so much tattva, so much depth they gave to the world on his order. And they revealed the purpose of his descent. There is the prayer we pray to Srila Rupa Goswami. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadama Hyam Dadati Sva Padanti Kam That Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada he fulfilled the desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his mano abhishtam, his most heartfelt, his deepest desire. Sri Chaitanya <coughs> Mahaprabhu came to this world to distribute 
to the jiva souls, something which had not been given previously for so many yugas. Even Sri Krishna himself came, descended 5,000 years ago, but he did not distribute the transcendental prem very easily. One had to be very, very qualified to have this prem. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended to this world and we know from our acharyas that this is Krishna himself again coming, but coming especially with very great mercy, completely endowed with the merciful nature of Srimati Radhika, and to distribute this mercy to the world and to taste very special uh, internal desires that Krishna had. We have heard the three internal desires of Sri Krishna. I'll not elaborate because I want to make this short. So, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended, he came to distribute very freely to all the jiva souls who are suffering in Kali Yuga. But we are in the lowest position, the most fallen, the most patita. But he came to elevate all the fallen conditioned souls and not just to elevate them even to Vaikuntha, but only to give them the highest Vraja Prem, the love of the Vraja Vasis for Krishna. And even more specific than that, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to give to the jiva souls their highest possible attainment for the jiva. And this is the most esoteric understanding of our disciplic succession. That is Radha Dasyam, the service of the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. In our disciplic line, all of our acharyas are in this Madhurya mood of Radha Dasyam. And they represent the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on all levels. But specifically they are pointing in this direction, that we should desire, that we should develop lobha, some kind of greed, that we want to have this thing. Why? Because it is the very highest it is the greatest treasure, it is the most sublime truth. And this is the very purpose for which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended. So Srila Prabhupada, our beloved divine master, came to the Western world to give to all the jivas ultimately this same thing that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended to give. But it is not always possible to give until there is some qualification, some what is called adhikar. So some adhikar had to be created. So he gave so many processes, the, the very process that we are trying to pursue in our lives, the chanting of Maha Mantra, the association of sadhus, sadhu sangha, nam kirtan, bhagavat sravan, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. He gave Srimad Bhagavatam to the world. He gave all of these different methods of bhakti and he emphasized to us that we should try to go deeply, try to dive deep into this. But his time was not so long with us. He was only with us for a few years. It is not overnight that one can achieve this highest level of bhakti. It, it may be a number of lifetimes. But he started everyone on this path. He came to the Western world and took anyone from any position to start them on this path of bhakti. And so 
When he left, he had accomplished so much, but yet he wanted to do so much more. He was asked once in 1975 that if you are able to complete the translation of the Srimad Bhagavatam, then what will you translate after that, Srila Prabhupada? Will you translate perhaps Mahabharata or Vedanta Sutra? And then Prabhupada responded that these scriptures are not so important to us in terms of bhakti. But the scriptures, the shastras which have been given by the Goshamis, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, these are very specific, very helpful for us to go deep into bhakti. So he tried to give in the time span that he had. Chaitanya Charitamrita he gave. In part, he gave part of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, you may ask, well, how is that? Uh, he translated all the verses. Yes, but the Acharyas, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, they gave so many further explanations for so many of the shlokas. But he intended also to give that later. At that time, he gave what we could understand. So it was his intention that progress would continue to be made. And in, in order to ensure that his disciples would continue to go forward in bhakti, he established an entire society whereby everyone can have sadhu sangha. We can associate with one another and we can go forward. But what is most essential is the type of sadhu sangha. Srila Rupa Goswami describes that real sadhu sangha means that you are associating with someone who is in the same mood and who is very affectionate and who is also superior to oneself. That is real sadhu sangha. So in our society there were certain levels of sadhus available at the time when Prabhupada disappeared. But certainly there was a necessity for much more advanced sadhu sangha like Prabhupada in a higher caliber. So Srila Prabhupada personally asked Srila Narayan Maharaj at the time when he was departing from this world. He called him and held his hands in his own hands and requested him that you please perform my samadhi burial with your own hands. With tears in his eyes, Prabhupada asked like this. And Prabhupada asked, he told him, he said, I have brought so many of these, my disciples, to Krishna consciousness. And they have made some progress, but there is so much more progress required. You please help them to go higher in bhakti. And at that time, Srila Narayan Maharaj responded to Prabhupada, I will do as you order. I accept you as my Siksha Guru, and I will take your order on my head, and I will carry it out till my last breath. So he has come here, and for the last 18 years since Prabhupada's disappearance, he has continually been giving so much guidance, so much help. Anyone that is coming to him, he is openly, freely giving from his heart so much help and guidance. And now he is venturing forth, as Govinda Bhakata Prabhu said, in old age he is coming, undergoing so much difficulty. Why? Because he wants to give the mercy that is in his heart, that he has received from his beloved Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj, and the disciplic line. So we are our family is one. There are not differences. Some people may misunderstand that there are some differences, but there is no difference. The teachings of our disciplic line are one. And we are very, very fortunate to be in the presence of a personality who has actually tasted these higher moods and bhavs of Krishna consciousness. And he can convey them to us very sweetly, very beautifully, 
the shloka I just recited, Shri Krishna lila katuneshu daksham adorya madhurya gunaishta yuktam. This is describing that Srila Narayan Maharaj is very expert, sudaksham, in describing the sweet leelas of Radha and Krishna and the Vrajavasis with Krishna and also the beautiful leelas of Goranga Mahaprabhu. And those of us who have had opportunity to travel with him, to be with him, we literally find ourselves swimming in this nectar. So much happiness, so much bliss. And it is our desire that somehow or other we can assist in his mission. Because his mission is the same mission the, of our beloved Srila Prabhupada. So on this auspicious day, we pray at the lotus feet of Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj that he bless us and bestow upon us his mercy in the form of this beautiful Krishna Kata and stay with us many, many more days and years so that we can go forward as all of our gurus want us to. Guru Premanande, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayana Maharaja Kita.